All right, so in today's video, we're gonna be covering how to build laser targeted cold email lead lists. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Matt Lucero. I run a B2B lead gen agency that works on a pay per show basis over at anevomarketing.com. And here's an example of the types of lead lists we build, has first name, last name, title, company, email, the quality, phone number and all of that. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do exactly this, but actually make sure it's laser targeted so you can email the prospects that you exactly want to be talking to. So without further ado, let's dive straight into the video. So the first step that you're gonna to want to do, and it sounds very simple, but a lot of people overlook this, is to identify your audience. Now this sounds really simple, but most people just don't even do this. They just start guessing and they don't try and lay out before they actually scrape the list who they want to target. So if you don't have your audience properly identified, you're going to scrape a list that will ultimately be irrelevant and will result in terrible campaign performance. Like so many people, so, so, so many people mess this up and it just ruins their whole campaign. And there's no point in really reaching out to people that aren't relevant to who you want to talk to. So you need to know precisely what you're searching for to be able to narrow down your list properly. So you're reaching out to relevant people. Building an accurate lead list is relative as your product might be relevant to one market, but irrelevant to a slightly different market. So what this basically means is that like it is a, you know, it's a subjective thing to determine if a lead list is accurate or not, because it just ultimately depends on your product and your campaign as a whole, right? So for example, if you're selling Facebook ad lead generation to home service businesses, it might not matter if you got plumbers, roofers, home remodelers, window cleaners, but if you only want to sell to plumbers, then the rest of these people would be part of an irrelevant list. So you need to be very diligent the more specific you are with your lead list, and you should be very specific because a specific campaign will perform better. Also note, even if you can sell to a variety of niches, it might be good to artificially niche your lead list so you can make a more targeted campaign and call your audience out. That's what I was just referencing, is the more specific you can make a campaign, the better it usually does regardless. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the main attributes of your audience that you need to identify for this process. So the first thing you wanna identify about your audience before you scrape lists is what industry are they in, what field are they in more specifically. So it's pretty straightforward, but you wanna make sure this is as narrow as possible, ideally. So, you know, for example, saying accountants is better than saying professional services. Professional services is really broad and nobody would identify as a professional services company, but a lot of people would identify as an accountant or an accounting company. Same with home services. People would rather be, if you're reaching out to plumbers, it's rather to call out plumber, it's better to call out plumbers than it is to call out home services companies because once again, more targeted means more relevant. As long as there's enough data on it, the more specific, the better. The next piece you wanna narrow on, revenue. How much money are they making? So you obviously want to target companies that have enough money to afford your services. Make sure to identify this before you start a campaign. So make sure you have an idea of how much they should be making. So. Note, I wanna say that this is good from a strategy standpoint, make sure you understand the revenue, but when it comes to actually scraping real lead lists, the revenue filters are kind of shoddy because most data sources have inaccurate revenue numbers since private companies don't have you know, their revenue data public, but it's just good for you to kind of map that out so you can filter it out in this next way, which is headcount. So how big is their company? There's a few main things you want to consider. Obviously, you want to target the headcount that's most relevant to who you're reaching out to, but I'll kind of break down different headcount segments to think about. So one to 10 headcount, these are small businesses. They tend to be solopreneurs and beginners, and they tend to not have as much money. So pricing objections may be common, but once again, it's specific to your service. So if you're selling to solopreneurs and beginners, this is the headcount you probably want to target. 11 to 50, still small businesses, but they the CEOs and founders are more accessible and they tend to have more money. 50 to 100, this is the end of like a small business. Technically a small business is anything under 100 employees, but this is the end of that small business segment. But the CEOs tend to be less accessible at this higher headcount range. And you're probably gonna have to target more of like a VP or director or, or at least not a CEO. You might target a CMO for marketing services, a CRO for sales services, etc. A uh, 100 to 500 headcount, this is mid-market. C-suite people will be much harder to get in touch with as they have way more responsibilities and there's more bureaucracy. Different problems arise at this level, which might be more relevant to your service. So for example, these guys might have a lot more niche problems, like one to 10 headcount. None of these guys are thinking about, for example, HR services because they're not big enough to worry about HR, but these types of companies might. So something else to consider. 
500 plus enterprise market segment, probably best to target like manager type titles. Uh, and there's, I'm sure there's a ton of variance between like 500 and like 2000 in terms of whatnot, but this is enterprise. The main gist of what I'm getting at here at this head count is that these types of people, you're going to have to go lower on the totem pole to get any store of attention from people at that company. So the next thing that you want to make sure you have identified, job title. So which job titles are relevant to your product? You need to make sure that you're actually reaching out to people who care about your product. Now, this sounds obvious once again, but if you're pitching, for example, something about revenue growth, the person who's going to care about that is a CEO. For example, an IT manager, though, might care about a cyber attack. If you went to a CEO and you tried to tell them, hey, you know, you should be worried about cyber attacks, they might not care as much as an IT manager. But if you're trying to sell revenue growth type services, you're probably going to want to go to someone who cares about that. So make sure you identify your job title, location, what location does this person slash company exist in. Most people target the U.S., but it's also worth considering, depending on where you are, you know, different location segments. Intent. So this is something that a lot of people overlook that can be used really heavily in lead list scraping. So what actions have these people expressed that show intent for your product? So this can be a gold mine, depending on how you leverage it and what data sources you use. So for example, you can use data about who companies are hiring for as a way to target relevant prospects. So for example, if you sell video editing services and you target people hiring for video editors, that is way more likely that you're going to get someone who's relevant than if you just went to random people. So intent data is gold. It's super powerful. There's some data sources, which I'll discuss later in the video that have intent data, and there's a bunch of ways to use it, but don't overlook this when you're trying to identify your audience. If you can think of any intent that you can scrape, that would be useful to a campaign. Do not overlook that. Definitely try and see how you can use that in your campaigns. Some other big, bigger data sources have cookies to see if they're in the market for something like they, they track some other stuff to scrape intent data. That's not like hiring the data on this is not super vast, but it can be really useful if you have it. Uh, and then other unique attributes. So what unique attributes can you include in your ideal client profile that might be specific to your campaign? This can be super specific to your market. I leave this kind of broad because there's other stuff that is just specific to your market. So maybe you want to target people using a certain software, attended certain event, or any other attribute that you can scrape for. Make sure you have that identified before you actually go in and pick the data source that you're going to want to use. Make sure you know in the, this case that you have these things basically written down so you can filter for it down the line. So that's basically identifying your audience. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is picking the best data source for you to scrape. So we're going to break down a few data sources. The first data source is Apollo. So this is super common. A lot of people like to use Apollo. I like Apollo. And Apollo is a great data source for most scraping without breaking the bank compared to big data companies like ZoomInfo or Cognizum. Those companies, like if you want similar data, it will, will cost you in the tens of thousands of dollars per year. But Apollo, you can get tons and tons of really accurate data at a really affordable price. Here's just a screenshot of like their filter section. They have 262 million different contacts in their database, tons of different filters, list, stage, custom fields. Um, you can have name, job title, location, uh, time zone, company, employee headcount, industry. Their industry filters are really strong. Um, Apollo, amazing data source. And even with some of the other data sources, they plug into Apollo. So I would 100%. Apollo is a great place to start. Pricing $99 a month for unlimited emails, which is actually 10,000. And then 1,000 exports. So realistically, you're only getting 1,000 exports per month for this data. So that comes out to about 10 cents per contact, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, maybe a little less. The math is <laughs> fleeting me right now. But previously, you could scrape 10,000 exports for the same price. But that might be available depending on your location. You might want to just check and see. But this is not... Um, it's not the best deal compared to what it used to be, but it's still a really strong data source. hundred percent would recommend Apollo. The pros is that there's tons of filters, uh, 250 million plus contacts. Really there, there's some intent data that you can definitely use in your campaigns. The cons are though, is that a lot of people are drawing data from here since it's priced really well. That means that a lot of people are reaching out to the same contacts you are. So, and the pricing used to be cheaper. Um, that you could get more data. So I guess that kind of plays in either way, depending on how you look at it. But I would highly recommend Apollo is a really solid place if you want to scrape data from. Another good place, clutch.co plus instant data scraper. So clutch.co is a directory that you that has like B2B industries and agencies, and you can scrape data 
from there based on their ratings and stars and all kinds of different filters. And I'm actually going to show you how to do that right now. All right, awesome. So this is clutch.co. This is their website. And then there's all kinds of filters. This is basically full of different types of agencies that you want to scrape. So let's say you wanted to scrape PR agency. So you can click over here to PR. There's 12,000 firms. You can play around with the different filters, whatever is relevant to you. So let's say we want this this filter that I laid out. And then there's this Chrome extension. It's called Instant Data Scraper. You can go look it up on the Chrome store. After you install it, then you can use this to basically scrape the whole data source. It finds the table over here. And then it shows the company name. It scrapes all this data. And it's going to have a button here for you where it says locate next button. What this essentially means is like you need to go down here, press next. So then it knows you know how to skip between the pages. And then you can just click start crawling and what it'll do is we'll scrape all the data go to the next page scrape all the data and then you can download this super easily in a csv so this is a free way to scrape data from clutch an instant data scraper is just an amazing tool that you can use in all kinds of different data sources so yeah that's how you can scrape clutch it's great if you want to target b2b industries or agencies it also allows you to scrape data based around their their rating or stars pricing so it's free but you have to enrich enrich these urls in a tool like apollo so basically what we just export is a list of company names and company websites but if you want to get the actual emails you still have to plug it into a tool like apollo so that's really good but the main pro of it is that you're using different filters than what apollo has and you can call out in your email copy that like hey i found you on clutch so that's really useful the cons is that you still need to use apollo or another data source to enrich so another data source you can use is Crunchbase. Crunchbase is a really powerful data source that you can use to scrape based on like unique criteria that Apollo doesn't have, such as funding, IPO status, and lookalike data. So lookalike data is like if you plug in five different websites, it'll find you a bunch of different companies based on the websites that you gave it. So super useful. It also has categories that Apollo doesn't, such as SaaS. So if you want to target SaaS, Crunchbase has a better filter there. Uh, and for more sub industries, it might be useful pricing. So it's either $360 or $600 per year, depending on which plan you use. So it's more expensive than Apollo. That's for sure. There's better niche data compared to Apollo and there's different filters compared to most other data sources. The cons are is the data is still expensive compared to Apollo. And if you're exporting accounts, you still have to enrich the accounts with Apollo. So basically everything flows back to Apollo. There's other uh, data sources that you can use to enrich data, but I just really like Apollo for the affordability. Another data source you can use store leads data source centered around e-commerce brands that has unique filters such as Instagram, Pinterest followers, and specific Shopify apps. And I can kind of just hop in here into store leads to kind of show you what that's like. All right, awesome. So this is what the inside of store leads looks like. So essentially it's basically just centered around uh, specifically e-commerce companies. So I'm gonna go here and show you what it looks like. You can add filters, search by Pinterest followers, plan, platform, rank, product images, like all kinds of different data sources, TikTok followers even. So you could say TikTok followers, if they've gained you know 100 TikTok followers in the last 30 days, execute the search, and then it gets you a bunch of companies based on that. So this stuff is really useful if you're targeting e-commerce companies. So yeah, Store Leads, another really phenomenal platform. Their pricing, it's $75 a month for their base plan and $250 a month for their like maximal export plan, which you can also add other users to. So somewhat expensive, but still really good if you're targeting e-commerce companies, not a bad investment at all. Pros is that there's lots of e-commerce only data. The cons though are, you know, like every other data source, the revenue filters aren't super accurate. The industry filters are somewhat accurate, but overall store leads is good if you want to scrape e-commerce companies. So the last data source I want to cover is niche data sources plus instant data scraper. So the pricing, it depends on what whatever niche data source you're using. But essentially what I mean by niche data sources is let's say, for example, you want to target country clubs and, you know, Apollo doesn't have country clubs and Crunchbase doesn't have country clubs, but you found a website that has a list of country clubs. You can just use instant data scraper and scrape that. So that's another really good option if you're targeting something really specific and you have a data source on that so pricing depends on where you're scraping from a lot of times it's free if you just find find the right data source and then you can use instant data scraper so this can be really strong depending on how your campaign is structured or positioned and who you're reaching out to so high level overview those are all the data sources just pick the one that's basically most applicable to you for pricing and other reasons i'd recommend apollo for basically most anything but yeah apollo is good 
Clutch.co, Crunchbase, Store Leads, and Niche Data Sources, all really good. There's tons of different data sources, but these are the main ones that I use. And then the last thing that we're gonna want to cover in this video, for how to build a targeted lead list is to verify your data. The reason why you need to verify your data, essentially when you scrape from all these data sources, not all of the emails are going to exist because some emails might be false in the data source and some people might have left the company, the email gets shut down. There's all kinds of reasons why the emails you scrape might not exist anymore. And if you email a bunch of emails that don't exist, they're gonna bounce and then all your emails are gonna go to spam. It's gonna ruin your email reputation. It's not something you wanna do. So you always, 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 have to verify your data. So there's two ways that you can do this. Number one is SMTP validation. This is practically what everybody does and what you should do always is to run your data through an SMTP validation tool like the ones that I'm going to talk about here below. So SMTP data validation is the fastest way to validate if your emails are good or bad but you will get us and you're going to get like a certain percentage back that are catch all or unknown because of how email servers are set up. And we're going to talk about how we address this. So basically you're going to take all the data that you get from one of these data sources, upload it into a tool like million verifier, never bounce or bulk email checker. I personally recommend million verifier. You're going to upload it and then you're going to get emails that are valid, invalid and catch all. So the valid emails are ones that are good to go and you can email. The invalid emails are ones that aren't good. You should not email them. And then catch all are ones that basically the SMTP validator couldn't figure out based on the way their email server is set up. And then you can either not email those people at all or use a catch all validation tool. So there's one really strong catch all validation tool on the market right now. It's called Scrubby. And so you can take all the tools that are marked as catch all and throw them into Scrubby. And this allows um, what Scrubby essentially does is manually verify all these email accounts. So they actually send out email accounts. It's a much more tedious process than like an SMTP tool but this allows you to get data that basically nobody else is emailing because if they're marked as catch all, then a lot of people just throw the data away. So Scrubby is a really good way to do that. The one thing that I do want to say though is Scrubby tends to be more expensive. Like it's a lot more expensive than these tools, but if you have a limited amount of data and you want to make sure that you squeeze as much data out of it as possible, then Scrubby is a great way to do that. So once all your data is scraped and validated, you can optionally clean it if you need to adjust any of the fields. So for example, if the company names, if you're using that as a field and you need to adjust that, then you can do that after this whole process. But this is basically the A to Z blueprint of how you can scrape data, how I scrape data, and basically how you can get a huge lead list of people that are highly targeted in your industry if you take all these principles and apply it and then you can start sending out cold emails. Load it up to your favorite automation tool and start sending. So. As we're wrapping up this video, I want to throw one last feeler out here. So if you're currently running a B2B business and you're making over 10K a month, you're looking to fill your calendar with more qualified sales meetings on a pay per show basis, meaning you're only paying for meetings that show up to the call. Book a link using the, the link below over in the description at anevomarketing.com. If you're interested, you can book a call with me and you're making over $10,000 per month and we can have a conversation to see if we can help you get more leads. If you have any more questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Appreciate you watching this video and have a good one.